what do you do? Times are tough. You've got kids in college, the car's on its last legs, and you didn't get the promotion and the raise that you were counting on, hoping for. What do you do? Your dearly loved father has a brain tumor, and if it is left untreated, it will most likely kill him. But if it's removed, the surgery could result in hearing loss or memory loss or loss of speech. What do you do? Your home is in the path of the hurricane and you know you have to leave but you don't want to because it's your home and you're worried that when you return it might not be a home to come back to. What do you do when your church is going through financial difficulties and there's barely enough money in the budget to pay for the regular bills and all of the projects and extra efforts have to get pushed to the back burner. What do you do? How about this scenario? You've been away from home for 20 years and the reason that you had to leave was because you tricked and cheated your brother out of his inheritance and a blessing and he wanted to kill you and now that you come back you have no idea how he feels about it now. Not only that, but it's not just yourself that you're worrying about nowadays because now you have a family and you didn't before. Now you have possessions and servants. So what do you do? This was the reality that Jacob faced because as I said, he cheated his brother out of an inheritance. He did it by deceiving his father and got his father to give him the blessing instead of Esau, his brother. And when Esau heard about this, he was so furious that he wanted to kill Jacob. So Jacob had to flee. And he left home. And he went to live with his, brother, with his uncle Laban. And now 20 years later, he's on his way back. And now he doesn't know how Esau feels. So understandably, he's nervous. Does Esau still want to kill him? Is Esau still upset? And so in order to plan for this reunion all the potential difficulties that there might be. Jacob has a few tricks up his sleeve. He first of all decides to separate all of his possessions, his, his companions into two groups so that way if Esau attacks at least one group should be able to get away. And then before doing this he sent lavish gifts to his brother. Herds and flocks of sheep and goats and cattle and donkeys and camels. That way they might cool Esau's anger as he receives all these gifts. And even if that doesn't work, then at least Esau will have to deal with each one of these gifts as they come to him, and, and that will slow him down a bit if he's still intent on doing harm to Jacob. And then, before he goes to sleep for the night, he sends his family across the river to give them one last line of defense against Esau. And so it's at this point in Jacob's life that he is alone. And it's also at this point that we read one of the more odd or strange accounts that we find in all of Scripture. All of a sudden, the text just tells us that a man wrestled with Jacob. Nothing leading up to it, no extra details. A man wrestled with Jacob there near the Jabbok River. And they wrestled all night. When the man could not overpower Jacob, he touched Jacob's hip and put it out of joint. And we find out later that this man who wrestled with Jacob was the Lord. What do you make of all of that? As I said, some, it's an odd account. Even Martin Luther thought that it was one of the more obscure sections of the Bible. But what's going on here? See, Jacob's life is filled with hardship filled with stress. He doesn't know what's going to happen to him. And at this time in his life, the Lord comes to him and they have a wrestling match. And in this way, Jacob learned a very important lesson. A lesson to struggle and to hold on to God. It's the same lesson that we are taught through these words. Because our lives are filled with hardship. We've got natural disasters and diseases and illnesses and financial troubles at home and at church. And what do we do as we struggle with those things? We 
take them to God in prayer and we struggle with the Lord. And through prayer, we wrestle with Him. But as we read this account, the story of Jacob, what we learn is that this wrestling match with God is a wrestling match that we cannot lose. Jacob struggled with the Lord physically and spiritually. He was praying to God and then that that spiritual prayer, that spiritual struggle turned into a physical one as he fought with the Lord overnight. Well, prayer is our way of going to God, wrestling with Him. But why would we do that unless we know that God will give us what we need? Jacob wrestled with God and held on to Him until God promised to give him the blessings that he had already promised him. And that's our hope as well. Struggling with God, holding on to him until he gives us exactly what we need. And there is perhaps no more situation or uh, no situation more desperate in our lives than the situation of sin that we have to deal with. Consider that struggle. How hard we must fight against our sinful nature and how often we lose that fight. Often, through our words, we have offended God. Through our actions, we have disobeyed Him. And with our thoughts, we have hurt Him and hurt others. And this is the sin that is a constant in our lives. And we struggle against it, but we always lose if we just use our own efforts. Our own efforts will never be enough. And so how disheartening it is to know that because of our sin, we deserve to be condemned. We deserve to have God completely cut us off, completely set us aside. It's a disheartening thing. It causes despair. But our comfort comes from knowing that as we wrestle with God, as we hold on to Him and say, Lord, forgive me, we do so because He has promised to do it. And in fact, He has done it. Jesus Christ came into this world And he washed our sins away using his blood as the solvent that would dissolve them. He was perfect on our behalf so that we might be perfect through him and through that perfection enter heaven. And then to leave no doubt in our mind, he rose again from the dead to make us know that death is no longer a part of the equation, that death can't hold us. What a wonderful blessing it is to have all of that. To have it as we cling to God. To know that when we ask him to forgive us, when we say, I will not let you go until you take away my sin, we say it because it's been done. And if God has gone through all of that effort to wash our sins away, we can trust his other promises that he makes to us, the promises to preserve us and protect us and defend us in this life. With all the struggles that we face here and now. What a joy it is to know that when we wrestle with God when we, by wrestling with these things, we can have confidence that the Lord will make sure that this is a wrestling match that we cannot lose. And that's where our confidence comes from. It comes from God. So this is the wrestling match that Jacob found himself in. Throughout the night, he's struggling with God. And when God cannot overpower Jacob, he touches Jacob's hip, he wrenches it out of socket. And so now Jacob, who cannot wrestle in that condition, all he has to do is cling to God. That's all that's left for him. To hold on to this man and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. You think maybe God wanted Jacob to do that? It's hard to imagine God losing a wrestling match, and yet here it happened. Because he wants Jacob to see that his only option in, that, in his life, and at that, especially at that time, his only option is to cling to God and not let him go. When we hear this, when we understand it in this way, it's easy to think of the parable that Jesus told in our Gospel. A widow in a town who had nothing except for a wicked and unjust judge who didn't care about men and did not fear God. That was all she had. 
And so she went to this judge to ask for justice against her adversaries because that was all she could do. And she continued to go to him again and again and again. She pestered him. She persevered. And she would not let up. And so this judge gave her justice because ultimately that was his job. Now for us as Christians, we know that we can go to God never giving up, continuing to ask Him for the things that we need and know that He grants them to us because that's His job. That's His promise. It's not just His job. He wants to do this. We are His redeemed children. He already sent His Son Jesus to wipe our sins away. We belong to Him. And so He loves to help us. He loves to protect us. And He loves it when we cling to Him and never let Him go. So that's why we hold on to the Lord in confidence. It's because He is faithful. Because He is faithful, we cannot lose. It's not going to be because of our efforts that God will grant us what we ask. It's because of His faithfulness. And by faith, we are able to cling to Him and cling to that faithfulness and never let it go, knowing that it's a wrestling match that we cannot lose. And it was because of this faithfulness that God blessed Jacob. God had made promises to Jacob. Promised that his descendant would be the Savior one day. Promised that he would be with him. And so Jacob required this blessing. He demanded it from God because that was his right. Because God had given him the privilege to do so. But it's interesting to see the way that the Lord blesses Jacob. He changes his name. To Jacob, that name means heel grabber. It means one who deceives, one who trips up. And Jacob received that name on the day of his birth because his twin brother Esau was born before him. But as Esau is being born, there is a hand that comes out and it actually held on to the heel of Esau. Jacob was the heel grabber. And through his deception and conniving, he asked or he tricked his father and cheated his brother. Rather than trusting in God to deliver the promise that he would be the one to receive the blessing, he decided to take matters into his own hand. And true to his name, he grabbed that heel. He was the one who tripped up. But now, his name is no longer Jacob. The blessing is that now he is Israel. One who contends or struggles with God and man and who overcomes. He overcomes because God is faithful to him. Now, Jacob knew that if he was going to get through the next few days or the next few hours, it wasn't going to be because of his deception or conniving or planning because after all, that's what had gotten him into this situation in the first place. No, it was going to be because of God. Because God was faithful to him and God would keep him and protect him. Now my question for you is, who are you? Are you Jacob or are you Israel? Sadly, oftentimes we are Jacob. Because when we are faced with struggles and hardships in our lives, it is our temptation to use our own ingenuity, our own planning, and maybe even our own deception in order to get what we want. And we set Christ aside. Now quickly and easily that can spill over into our spiritual lives as we have this problem of sin there in our hearts. And rather than saying, God, please take care of it. I won't let you go until you forgive me. We say, I can show God that he should love me. I can show him that he deserves to love me or that I deserve his love. I can do it by being good. And we put forth our own efforts to take care of the problem of sin. And we fail. And we are condemned. And so we have no other option, we have no other recourse than to throw our arms around God and refuse to let Him go until He blesses us. Which He does. So we hang on to him. The Lord made Jacob struggle in order to teach him that lesson, that he had no other, no other way to go, no, nothing else that he could do 
and to hang on to God. We have that same promise. What a wonderful thing. When we're faced with hardships in this life, it causes us not to become stronger in ourselves to deal with them, but rather to become stronger in God who promises to deal with them for us. What a joy to wrestle with God, to struggle with Him. And to know that in the end, no matter what happens, no matter how our problems are solved or not solved, at least according to our own perception, no matter what happens, God has sent His Savior. God has redeemed us. God loves us. And He did it because He is faithful. Let us remember this when we struggle and contend with God. We overcome because God has overcome. We win because God is faithful. This friends, is a wrestling match that we cannot lose. Amen. Please stand.